What up, world? This is The Goal Net, recording live here from outside Chicago. And today we are going to talk about the Bauer 2X Pro. And we're going to do a deep dive and really take a look at all the different specs and key upgrades on this gear. We'll start with the pads, then we'll move on to the blocker and the glove. So first things first, um, if you want to know kind of anything about maybe the colors or anything like that, please check out my other video already on the YouTube channel related to this gear, which is the unboxing video. And if you're looking for a review, please stay tuned. That will come at a later date. I've currently got about four skates on these pads. I like to get at least six um, before I share any opinions or anything like that on the gear. But some stuff um, inevitably might come up as we talk. Like if you look down at the monster toe ties. You can see I've already tweaked those a little bit. Um, but again, the focus of today's video is really to go over the specs and explain to you what is the Bauer 2X Pro goalie pad and what are the key features for it. So if you're looking at this gear, maybe you want to understand how this gear might be different than Bauer's other line, the Supreme, that's the purpose of this video. So if we take a look at the face of this pad, you will see that Bauer has continued with the textured surfaces. It's a little bit different than we saw in the 1X. Um, and in my opinion, it gives the pads a little bit more depth versus if this were just a straight printed pad. And I think it's kind of neat how the graphic actually rolls into the textured surfaces. So you can see there's a little bit of the printing technology there in the red where there's almost like a ghosting pattern that could only be done with Bauer's printing technology. You couldn't do that with a cut and sew. And then that blends into the textured surface on the thigh rise and the same down at the boot. One of the really cool features here is I got what's called a metallic gold. And the, and the gold actually has what's called um, a little bit of a shine to it. So hopefully that comes out. And for anybody wondering why you can't get gold on the whole pad, um, playing it in the customizer, that's why, because this unique gold uh, material that Bauer's used for the logos and the darts isn't something that could be applied to the rest of the pad. So if we take a look at the inside, um, we'll notice that the knee wing is mounted directly flush to the sliding surface as well as on the wings. So that's something that um, Bauer's first generation Odin gear, which was the Supreme line and is a different line, um, but that was the last set of Bauer gear I'd use. So for me personally, that's a change. It's nice to see that all of the sliding gear is mounted directly to the surface. So this area here is one of the key upgrades to the pad. This has Bauer's Cortex Skin 2.0 which is supposed to be a significant durability upgrade compared to the first generation Cortec material that was on the um, 1S gear and 1X gear. And if you're not familiar with it, you'll notice there are no seams on this pad. So this material is designed to help goalies slide very, very quickly. And it's also molded over the core of this pad. So if you actually see this pad in production, they take the pad core and they lay the material on over top of it. It's not, you know, six or eight different pieces of Gen Pro sewn together to make the pad surface. They actually print the graphics onto the material and then mold it on over the pad. So that's really cool technology. If you haven't figured it out yet following my account, I love technology. Um, this applies to goaltending and really all aspects of life. So I'm really a huge supporter of what Bauer's doing with their goaltending department and a lot of the stuff they're doing. For my money, I think that Bauer is really pushing the boundaries of doing things differently right now. And I really hope that they continue to push this technology and evolve it. Um, Cause I think it could be a huge step forward for the industry. So if we look down at the boot here, kind of continuing back on the specs, um, the standard configuration for these will be an offset to, uh, toe position. If you go in the customizer, you can get a centered position. And then the stock toe tie option will be the elastic monster toe ties. As you can see, these are co-branded Monster Hockey and Bauer. Um, so the monster toe ties are pretty adjustable. Won't get into you know my review and my opinion of them. But as you can see, I pulled in the elastic a little bit to try and shorten the length of the toe tie. 
And this is one of those things, there's no right or there's no wrong, just my personal preference as a goalie, um, as I like it to be snug, you know, and then let the elastic move, take the stress off my knees and ankles and joints as I go up and down and use the elastic to um, recenter the pad as I get up and in and out of the butterfly. And I just felt that the stock setting was a bit too long, so I have shortened that. If you go in the customizer and you're not a fan of the HAL style laces, you can also add the CRS laces, which were featured on all of the Odin pads up to this one, or you can get a traditional skate lace. And again, if you want it centered, that is also an option. If we come up to the knee wing, you'll see that we've got a 45 degree knee block. And one of the upgrades um, here is the Quattro material on the knee landing surface here. So we can see this is Quattro. We've got the 2X Pro branding on there. This is a very adjustable knee block. Um, that's also one of the things aside from the toe ties, but I've also done some adjusting with the knee block itself. So this stable slide knee block is actually tied into the pad. And that's a huge feature um, because tying the knee block into the pad basically increases the connectedness you'll have between the knee block and the pad itself. And that's a key thing when we talk about sliding um, and we talk about really driving your knees into the ice and then the overall feel of the pad when you're in the butterfly. So you can see we've got some elastic, or excuse me, some Velcro on the top and the bottom. And that allows us to adjust this knee block. So it's got a Velcro tab on the bottom and the top. And then as you can see, 45 degree knee block. It's got a little bit of a wedge stabilizer. And then if we come in on the inside here, this is what allows you to adjust the elastic knee length. So as I mentioned, um, this stable slide knee block is very adjustable. So the stock settings, um, as it came from the factory, the knee elastic was there. I actually pulled mine down there. Again, just preference for a tighter fit. And then you can see that the Bauer knee block is actually laced into the pad, again, which is gonna increase um, the connected feeling, really the overall seal um, and the stiffness of the pad and hopefully help keeping the goalie's knee from sliding off the knee block. And one of the cool things too with laces is that it makes it fully adjustable. So if you wanted your knee block to play a little bit looser, that's not something I recommend, but I'm sure there are goalies out there who prefer it. You could actually go in and adjust these laces very easily. I actually pulled mine a little bit tighter because I like my knee blocks as snug as I can. Um, and as you can tell, so I pulled my elastic in and I tied my knee block a little bit tighter. So that's pretty easy to do. And then just to put everything back together, it's just a couple quick tabs with the Velcro and it's complete. So moving in from the stable slide D-Bock, we've got the AX uh, Suede Quattro Plus material. Um, and as you can see, it's labeled Quattro Pro on the pad itself. And this runs on the knee landing area, which is a very nice, soft, supple knee landing area. Um, that was something on the 1S gear. Um, I felt the knee, the, like the landing piece here, for, again, it's preference, um, was a little stiff. So definitely liking the softer landing. Um, it does have the Quattro over on the face of the knee. And then as we open the pad up, we can see that the Quattro material runs all the way down the center of the leg channel. So that's really about feel. Um, that essentially will allow the pad just to give it a little bit of extra grip. So when we're in the butterfly recovering in or out of RVH, this additional Quattro material here um, should stick to your leg a little bit. Doesn't hinder rotation at all, um, but it's just a feel thing. Some people love that, some don't. Um, but this is included on the vapor pad to make it play um, you know, a little bit more connected. One of the other key upgrades on the leg channel here is the thermocore material. So this is like a breathable mesh material. So this should allow your leg to breathe better um, during use and then also dry faster. Um, so if you're on the ice, you know, multiple times a day, back to back, whatever, um, your pads should dry very quickly. And then the area outside of the thermal core has what uh, Bauer calls abrasion zone. Um, and this is designed to be a high wear material. 
And then the outside of the wraps are Bowers Aerolite material. And then we've kept the tune fit strapping system um, as a carryover from the 1X line. So the materials are upgraded, the knee block is upgraded, the adjustability of the knee block is upgraded, and the thermal core liner material. These are all key upgrades from the 1X pad. And then some of the staples of the Odin line in general, we've got the curved composite in the thigh rise. Um, so basically from about this portion of the pad up to the top binding there, um, right in this area here is their curve insert. And the goal of that is to provide you stability um, with the pad, good seal, um, and also good rebounds for any pucks that come in on that thigh area there. Um, so there's a bunch of pictures if you go into Google um, and check out some of the 1S gear when it came out. Bauer did a really good job of explaining where that material is in the pad and how it's used. Um, and to me, again, that's one of the key characteristics of the Odin style gear. So as we move down the pad, one of the other key changes um, to me, and also one thing if you haven't noticed, the overall profile of this pad is very, very thin. So Bauer has definitely thinned out the overall pad going from the 1X to the 2X. And then again, when comparing Vapor to Supreme, um, this distance right here, you know, Vapor is one of the thinnest pads I've ever seen. And you'll see down here, we have what Bauer is calling the Free Flex 100 boot. This boot is extremely flexible. Um, I'll show you that right now. Like it's crazy how soft and flexible the boot is. But aside from the boot flexibility, which is great, um, again, for a connected feel with the pad, getting in and out of RVH, things like that, or where the flexible boot comes into play. The boot angle on this pad has also dramatically changed. So the Vapor and the Supreme both had more of an upright boot, so the boot kind of went up there, versus this is gonna have much more of a 90 degree. So if we come down straight from Vapor and go across, we've got a very flat boot angle there. So this pad will sit much more on your skate compared with the 1X line or anything of the Supreme line. And that's definitely one of the changes I've noticed. Um, you know, got this gear early. This is not in stores yet. And that was one of the changes that I hadn't really picked up on until the gear came in. And I instantly noticed it. Um, and I noticed it coming, you know, on the ice wearing it because I'm used to kind of that more higher boot style. So I found that very interesting. But again, if you look, you know, if we come through the word vapor and across the boot, it's almost like a perfect 90 degree. So this is a big distinction um, between the vapor and the Supreme line. And I think that's great. You know, Bauer is able to cater to a whole different set of goalies now um, and really differentiates the lines even further between vapor and Supreme. So I think that's a key upgrade and is something that definitely should not be overlooked when it comes to the pads. So again, we've got the uh, Cortec ST material, or as I've called it earlier, the Cortec 2.0, but basically the second generation of their skin, um, which is thicker and tougher material, but still slides great. Got the printed technology on the pads. We've got the offset toe with the adjustable monster how. We've got the free flex 100 degree boot. We've got the 90 degree uh, excuse me, the 45 degree cutout on the knee block. We've got the leveler. We've got the adjustability between the strings and the Velcro in the knee block area. We've got the quattro material on the knee block and inside the leg channel. We've got the tune fit strapping, and then we've got the Aerolite wraps. So in a nutshell, um, that is the vapor gear. One thing to note as well um, is that Bauer's goal is to simplify kind of buying pads. So instead of doing the traditional 35 plus two or whatever. They've gone, you know, small, medium, large, XL with their gear. So mine is currently a large, um, and this correlates as close as possible to a 35 plus one kind of a traditional goalie speak. The only thing I haven't covered actually that I probably should have is right here. Um, the pads do come with a removable outer knee flap. This is my strapping system that I like. So I actually took the knee flap off. And one of the other great things with what Bauer does is you get a whole bag of straps with the pads. And I actually did some adjustability versus how they came in the box. So here is the knee flap. Um, this is the Aerolite material. It has the thermal core um, liner on it. And then it's got some nylon webbing and basically like a plastic washer. 
And to attach these or unattach these, you just slide them. You just slide them through the slits here um, in the Gen Pro tab. So you slide the washer through there at, a, um, you know, basically parallel to the hole, flip it 90, and then that stays locked. And if you kind of want to adjust it between a loose fit and a tight fit, it actually has two sets of holes so that you've got a lot of adjustability there. Um, so again, I like to wear my knee block as open as possible. So I took these off and that's why we see my knee setup is like that, um, but it's great that Bauer includes them and gives you some good adjustability to take them on or off very quickly. And the other great thing that Bauer gives you is a full set of extra straps so you can further tune it. Um, so if you want to go with a boot strap or a Lundy loop, we've got the elastic strapping here. And then the pad has the hardware down here so that we can slide and connect that in. And this is kind of the same carryover technology from Odin, um, you know, like the 1S gear, initial 1X, but slide this piece out, pull the tab in, um, and you're good to go with the Lundy loop or um, to put this down around your foot like a bootstrap. And then you also get different length elastic straps to do for the tune fit. So that is actually one of the changes that I made. The pads come stock with the medium tune fit straps um, and actually I was surprised, but I like to wear the calf looser than I would have guessed before the pads came in. But each one of these straps is labeled, so here you can have the medium. So you've got medium, large, and small. Um, so I actually subbed out the medium straps for the large straps and definitely found that the pad sat a little bit more how I like. That's one of those things, again, there's no right, there's no wrong. That's all about a goaltender's preference. But that's very, very easy to do. So if we open up the leg channel, there's two Velcro tabs here, um, so you just unvelcro it, and that's it. Basically, take the other set of tune straps out, uh, tune fit straps out of the bag, and then just velcro them in like that. And then you even have some adjustability if you don't want to change size. You could go in like that to where I'm loose them, looser. You wanted to tweak the angle, you know, you could play around with different things like that. Um, so I've got mine set pretty basically both centered in there, um, but again, these are the large tune fit straps. There you can see that that is labeled uh, long, um, and that's about a five centimeter difference, I believe, between the two sizes. So this is 62, and I believe the other ones that we just looked at were 57, and then you lace that through there, and then you've got all this Velcro on the outer wrap down, you can wear it middle, um, you can wear it up. It's an interesting note too, would have guessed I would have liked to have worn it up and tried to get this to act more like a professor strap, but with the flatter boot and the tightness of this leg channel, um, I've actually been more comfortable wearing this Y strap a little bit looser and putting it more in the neutral Y position um, versus up or down. That's definitely something I'll continue to play with as I've tested a lot of gear over the past few years. Strapping is something, quite frankly, I wasn't all that maybe into before I started doing the goal net. I was really mostly focused on like the weight of the gear, um, how well did it slide were probably my two biggest factors. And after doing this, I can definitely say that things like strapping um, has actually become one of the things that I find is most different pad to pad that can really make or break a user's experience. So. Love the Bauer pads come with the extra straps, the easily removable um, knee wings, and then the adjustability of the monster straps. So next, let's move on to weighing the pads. All right, so we will do this first in gram, or excuse me, in pounds, and then in grams. So depending on where you are in the world, this will make more or less sense to you. I live in the States, so I am not on the metric system. Just as a point of reference, I wish we were. It is way cleaner to understand. However, you can't kind of escape uh, what you've grown up with. So anyway, to me, kind of the threshold for pads right now is that I think anything under five pounds is light. I think anything over five pounds is heavy, and this corresponds to a 35 plus one is an approximate sizing. That's normally what I get my gear at, or 35 plus one and a half, really. Um, but let's take a look and see where this gear comes in. 
Um, so as you would expect from a Bauer, definitely one of the brands pushing the innovation of lightweight. We are coming in at 4.9 pounds for the Vapor 2X Pro pad in a large size. And I will take this off. And let's convert this over to grams for uh, people in other parts of the world. And if we look at grams, 2231. So, um, yeah, that's where this pad comes in, exactly where we'd expect. I would qualify this as a light pad. Um, and again, wearing it, it feels super light on my leg so far, so it's definitely, definitely great there. And again, this just kind of falls in line with what you'd expect from Bauer gear at the current time. So a couple other quick things before we wrap up um, the pads. Just every time I pause the camera, I keep noticing other stuff on these pads. I'm really excited to show you. So the knee wing here is the uh, Cortec ST material to skin. And then you can see, and I'm guessing just based on the difference of the colors, um, but the actual top of the knee block there is a Gen Pro. So just so you can see this red is really rich, um, but you can see a little bit in the differences of the material there for anybody that's curious. And then as I mentioned earlier, this boot flexes really well. Um, so just in a much better angle now to show that off. So yeah, the boot flexes really, really well on that. Um, and kind of looking down as well shows you how vertical um, this boot is or how when I stand it up, um, this pad really just basically sits flat on the floor versus some other pads um, like the Supreme would sit more upright. So that's flat and that's upright if anybody's not familiar with the terminology I'm using there. All right, so let's really change gears and move on to the All right, so the initial generation Bauer blockers, I feel like created a ton of buzz in the industry. And when I say initial generation, I'm referring to Odin. When they put the curved composite inside the blocker, that really amplified the rebounds, and that's definitely a trend with gear right now, is what has the hottest rebounds. Um, so this continues that legacy. As you can see, we have the curved composite, so there will be a layer of curve um, on the back side of the board. And as you can see, similar to the pads, we have the textured graphic, um, the metallic gold, the red, and then the printed graphic. So one of the big changes, um, there's actually a lot of changes really between the 1X and the 2X blocker. So as you can see, this will have the Cortec ST material, um, but the biggest thing is this board. This board um, was a traditional blocker board on the 1X gear. And here with the 2X gear, um, Bauer's gone with a trend that was really popular about 10 years ago um, and faded away. But like a lot of things, um, you know, things were good ideas and for whatever reason, maybe they were too early, didn't stick at the time, um, but Bauer has brought this back. So hopefully you can see how thin um, the nose of this blocker is. So that's one of the first things you'll notice when you pick this blocker up is just how thin um, the board is. So that's one of the big changes between the first generation 1X and the 2X. Second big change is the sidewall. The first generation Bauer had what I would call a two-piece sidewall. So there's actually a seam right here and you had the blocker board and then separately for here you had the sidewall. Um, they've gone with an all one-piece design which is a more modern look and kind of coincides with what the Odin gear really is. Um, and also a little bit more similar to the Supreme line in that regard. And another big change is probably the most obvious, but the 1X had a binding on the outside of it. And that was stock on all the gear. There's a couple pros like Cam Ward first jumps to mind, um, which if you look at their blocker closely, they've got a 1X with no binding. Um, but Bauer went away from the blocker binding on the 2X. And to me, that's pretty subtle, strictly aesthetic really. Um, but I just think with how modern this gear is, um, you know, the Bauer gear specifically to me is like the most modern looking gear on the market. It's got no seams. It's very clean looking, um, you know, with the printing technology and the Cortec. So I think it's just a nice subtle touch by Bauer to get rid of the binding here. I think it looks a lot cleaner. 
Um, as we go on to um, some more, on the inside of the blocker here, this is one of the things I think Bauer gets really right with their blocker designs. They've got the huge pad. Um, so your hand sits a little bit further back from the board. And in my opinion, it just gives you the best range of motion, but it still feels snug um, on your hand because you've got that extra padding there. So that's great. Um, inside, we've got the Thermocore material again. Um, we've got the abrasion resistant material as well on the edges, which should be the high wear zones. And then this white material here is the Aerolite. Um, when we come down to the finger protection here, um, Bauer's done a little bit differently, I think, than some um, of the other blockers on the market. So nothing is mounted to the sidewall. And in the spirit of range of motion, they have a bigger index finger protection. So when you close your hand on the stick, that's basically what you're getting. Um, I think really the only thing missing to me, which is a pretty common trend in gear right now, is a little bit of extra index finger padding. Um, you know, that was one of the first things I noticed. In terms of the blocker palm size, it is not um, as big. There are some of the Brian's blockers for the while, while um, that really had giant. Um, but it is a little bit different than, um, just like a little bit bigger than a CCM or a Brian's just in comparison. So it's not oversized, um, you know, where you gotta be like a giant goalie for this to fit. I'm about 6'2", um, and I find this a tad bigger, but it's not too big. It's more like, you know, if you buy um, a large Adidas t-shirt and a large Nike t-shirt, they're probably both gonna fit pretty similarly but they are a little bit different in fit, but it's not like a large versus an extra large, um, you know, if you're comparing sizes, hopefully that makes sense. If you do go on the customizer, of course, you do have the option to get the intermediate palm. So if you try this on, you feel like it's too big, um, you can get that. The other option on the customizer when it comes to the blocker is this pillow. You can get this um, pillow not shipped with your blocker if you don't like that. So. Generally speaking, I want all the padding I can get. So something like a blocker pillow is right at my alley. I'm glad that was included on my gear. Um, so the palm position as well feels pretty well centered um, on this blocker as well. I think that was one of the questions that I got from people. Um, but as you can see, you know, it's not sitting up, um, you know, higher on the hand, it looks pretty neutral um, there to me. So the next step is let's throw this on the scale and see where it comes in weight wise. All right, so we've got the scale in pounds here. All right, so now that I got was able to get the blocker to kind of rest with, again, how thin that board is in the taper, um, getting it to rest on a scale is more complicated than you'd think. But we're coming in at about 2.2 pounds. Um, so again, this is me, my opinion. Um, I referenced on pads, I'd say like less than five's light, over five's light. Blocker, pretty much the going rate is all somewhere around two pounds. Um, so this is a little bit over the two pound mark. Um, if you're, you know, real nitpicky, you might want to see it a shade under two pounds, but basically kind of standard going rate for a blocker. And let's change this up and do grams real quick. And in grams, you can see it's a thousand um, and one grams, or now we're getting a uh, 999, um, right around a thousand grams um, for the blocker. So last up is the glove. All right, so last up is the glove. Without giving too much away, because obviously I want everybody to hopefully come back to the Gold Nets YouTube channel and check out the initial repressions and view, which I should get up in a couple weeks. Um, but the glove has been my favorite part of the setup so far. Um, you know, I think with the pads that I never worn 1S, I might be more blown away. Um, but given that, you know, I've got some experience with some stuff in the, the Odin family, um, I sort of had an idea what I expected in the pads and really what I feel like I'm testing is the new boot angle, um, the softer pad core, and the strapping system. Um, but with the glove, you know, this really feels like a completely new glove to me. So if we dive in, again, you've got the um, textured graphics, 
um, the gold metallic. We've actually got the texture there. Uh, this actually is a pretty good finger curve. So if we look, this is more of a U shape compared to a V or a pancake closure. Um, this is the only option on this glove is a skate lace. The standard lace will be nylon, but single T is standard for this glove. And then as we check out um, some of the features, we've got some of the Aerolite material there. Really good hard hand pad. Um, anybody who follows me on Instagram made some jokes, but somehow I took like three pucks off the back of the glove um, in the same skate. Um, and anyway, really great padding on the back of the glove. Seals super flat um, to the ice as well. You know, if we think about covering it, very, very flat. And then Bauer got some of the little details right. So we've got elastic right here. And the purpose of that is that when the glove closes, um, it allows the back piece to flex a little bit more and really ensure that you get that nice tight seal. Um, and then as we open the glove up, um, we've got some pour on technology. We will get into that in a little bit. Um, we've got the thermal core um, pieces here and then the abrasion re resistant material here. We've got a traditional nylon strap at the wrist. And then we've got the um, grip material inside um, the glove here, which is new. This is a um, kind of 3D textured surface um, that is called catch grip. And that runs all the way through the uh, inside of the glove. And just here you can see we've opened up the glove a little bit just to show off some of the detail of the material um, inside the finger stalls and then the traditional you know upper wrist strap um, and behind the fingers then you can see there's the badge denoting the aerolite material um, which is pictured there on the back so it opens up really well for drying all right so i mentioned a moment ago that the glove has pour on in it. Um, so that'll be the material in the palm area here, which will aid against stingers and then also kind of help the pucks land softly in here for really good retention. Um, the glove will also have the curve composite in um, the cuff material here. And then as we get to the cuff, this is one of the most instantly noticeable things to me about this blocker, or excuse me, this glove. And this coincides with something I talked about on the pads being thinner and the blocker being thinner. It seems like really one of the design goals with Vapor um, was to thin everything out. So this is the thinnest um, glove cuff I've ever seen. And it's also kind of interesting because some gloves kind of have a bend there. Or if we looked at it this way, there's a bend there. Um, and this is also pretty much, there's a little bit um, of an indentation there. But generally speaking, this is the flattest, straightest cuff I've ever seen. And it's also the thinnest cuff. So that's a pretty unique um, design detail here on the Vapor. And then if we look at um, the inside of the wrist strap as well, uh, as we go back into here, the back side of this is the AX... Um, suede quattro material and then we have the catch grip materials what lines the front so you can see that's pretty plush between the two different comfort materials and the strap is higher up as well so you can do this pretty tight um, without hindering wrist mobility um, or anything like that from anybody that does um, you know a very hands out or a very glove up style So probably the most interesting thing about this glove is the one thing I haven't showed you yet, and that is the game ready closure out of the box. I showed a little bit about this on the unboxing video, but after using the glove, I can definitely say um, that it is the key feature or the key upgrade or really the upgrade on the glove. Um, so this is a 60 degree break and the closure on this glove is pretty remarkable. Um, you know, this is through about four skates. Um, again, it came pretty much like this out of the blocks, the box, but you can see how well the closure is on the tee itself. And then you've got really good seal um, into the pocket. And I personally prefer the kind of U-shaped fingers. So it's great that they were able um, at Bauer to get this incredible closure and still keep the U-shape. Seems like the trend with some of the gloves um, that are this game ready are kind of the pancake closure. Um, two different schools of thoughts, um, you know, and if it weren't pancake, it would be very straight there. Or excuse me, if it were pancake and not the kind of curve. So I love this because it's still got the traditional kind of feel, um, you know, with the rounded fingers. 
but it's got that incredible closure. And pucks, um, you know, I've had really good luck, um, even though plus one wasn't an option on the customizer. Um, it's a little bit more of a shallow pocket than I'm used to. With how broken in this is and how this funnels pucks toward the pocket, um, you know, the catching with this glove is great. And again, um, just uh, the, the piece of the, the vapor line that really stands out to me the most, and it was somewhat unexpected. Um, you know, I used a one ass glove and was just kind of neutral on it. Um, you know, didn't love it, didn't hate it. Part of it's I don't love that break, but, um, you know, never just really got comfortable with it. And versus like this glove, the second I got it out on the ice and used it, it's like, man, I am catching pucks um, so cleanly. You know, I absolutely love the break angle of this glove. Um, so that's really the key upgrade um, for me. And again, there's a, another look at kind of the unique cuff design on this. So the last thing we'll do in this video is uh, weigh this glove. So for me, um, you know, kind of glove weight gloves, um, it's kind of similar to blockers are generally all in the same family. Um, but I would say about two and a half pounds is really what I'd call the light to heavy. So anything over two and a half pounds, I would call heavy. And then anything under two and a half pounds, I would call light with where we are with glove technology. And as you can see, coming in at uh, 2.34 pounds, so around that down 2.3. So this definitely qualifies in the light glove category. And then we'll switch this over to grams. And in the world of grams, we're coming in at uh, 1,065. So we'll take a second now and kind of recap um, everything with the gear and then hopefully again tune back in next time um, and actually take the review. We'll give my opinions on how I actually like the gear um, after using it for enough skates to, you know, really give you a solid opinion. All right. So thanks again for everybody for tuning in. Um, we're at minute 37 here as we hit the recap. So for anybody that likes the longer videos, we definitely accomplished that. One of the main reasons for that is that, you know, at the outside, if you're not really in tune with gear, you may not realize how much stuff really changed with the 2X compared to the 1X. Um, so Bauer really changed a lot. And one of the things that like people don't often talk about enough is really pad cores. And to me, that's really what the pad is. You know, strapping is adjustable. Um, you know, you can get different boot brakes, you can get different internal brakes, but essentially the pad core is the pad itself and the pad core has changed on this. Um, the outer skin material has changed on these pads. The knee block has changed on these pads. The boot brake angle has changed on these pads. The boot flex angle has changed. The pads gotten more flexible. So tons of new stuff when we look at the pads. And specifically that Dynamics Flex Core like I showed off is really flexible. And that new 100 degree brute, again, a boot again is very flat. Um, so it's gonna sit closer to your skate like kind of right on top of the laces and then it's going to force that shin um, closer to your leg if you're used to a more upright break like you'd see on a supreme pad when it comes to the blocker we've got a new board so again essentially the blocker itself is different we've got that new thinned out curved board we've got the new one piece sidewall um, we've got the new palm design on the blocker so the blocker is really very different um as well you know with the 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 ivory quattro palm on it and then lastly the glove um so 60 degree break i believe is what one x was but again the glove is lighter the cuff is thinned out um the curve composite on the back of the hand is great you know i showed you a couple puck marks that i probably wish i didn't have and didn't even notice getting hit there and the game ready break on this thing is just really phenomenal so overall, um, that's the deep dive. That is what the 2X Pro gear is. So it is uh, you know, lots of key upgrades compared to the 1X gear. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, love the direction that Bauer is going in goalie gear and hope that they continue to put this many upgrades year over year. And we should really see them pushing the limits you know, of what's possible with goalie equipment. One thing I didn't really touch on is maybe who is this gear for compared to a Supreme goalie. You know, companies spend a lot of time and energy having two different lines of gear. 
and they put a lot of time and energy making sure that those two lines of gear are different so that they will appeal to different goalies. Um, so if you like a 60 degree break, you're the guy that's gonna like this um, catch glove. If you like um, the tapered style board, um, you know, you're the guy that's gonna like this blocker really compared to a Supreme. Um, when it comes to the pads, if you want a more flexible pad than the Supreme, you might wanna consider the Vapor. If you like a pad that's gonna sit a little bit, you know, closer to your skate and closer to your shin, you're a guy that should consider the Vapor. Um, so hopefully that's a really nice rundown of what this gear is. And as I mentioned a few times, you know, tune back in somewhere to two weeks to a month from now, probably right before the gear launches at retail. And I hope to have initial impressions review, which is just really after wearing these for six to 10 skates, you know, what did I like about the gear and, you know, are there any low points for me? So I will make sure that I touch both the, the low and the high. So this is the Goal Net signing out and thanks again to everybody for tuning.